What it do, everybody? It's your boy, King Crowder, checking back in with another edition of History That We Should Know That's Important to Know. This time, I want to... And Rosna, Gurley, they were formerly enslaved in Pine Bluff, Alabama, when they got their freedom. When um, they got their freedom, they relocated to um, Huntsville, where they kind of grew up and had their family and grow. Um, they purchased their land and their own plot inside of America, worked it as sharecroppers, built their foundation of family, and kind of raised a family. Man, it's all of a beautiful story that happened post Civil War for this family. One thing that uh, Mr. Gurley was emphasized by his father was to go in business, son, purchase land for yourself, and always seek opportunity. The first piece of opportunity that old Dudley Gurley received was that he heard about in Oklahoma, they actually had a sale going on of land and other things. So when this land purchase was given to blacks around this time or people of color that were being sold to in Oklahoma, old Dudley Gurley immediately went over there to take point in it. Before there was a Greenwood district of thoughts in the minds of how it had to be developed came from these blacks at the time. So one thing that Mr. Gurley did for himself was that he really architected how the city of Tulsa and the Greenwood district will be built. One of the things that was really miles about this guy is that he actually built a three-story building of 80 acres in Rogers County. And he was also one of the founders of the AME church. Back to that 80, 80 acre square foot, he emphasized his philosophy of pulling the resources together, working together, and he also had a community for when blacks, black, when formerly enslaved got free and needed somewhere to go. He sort of like had a little safe house at different locations for them. So when they got off the train tracks, he had them a place to lodge, and he also got them a place to work and establish himself. So Mr. Gurley saw this need, fulfilled that need, and said, hey, we know y'all are transitioning out of a truly bad and horrible situation. This is a way for you to get on your feet. You pay this little bit of fee and we will help you get up on your feet. That is how the wealth in Tulsa began to flip and migrate over itself so much and the Greenwood District began to flourish. When these hotels and different things began to pop up, Mr. Gurley's philosophy was taught really early on in the community that you must support black businesses, that you must work for each other, and all dollars in the community must stay inside of the community. He created a code in the neighborhood that if you either work outside of there, you still must take that money back and bank with us, operate with us, and stay with us. One of the largest things that the Greenwood District had was known as the Stratford Hotel. It was the largest black hotel establishment inside the United States. I want to just put this in perspective, y'all. They had commercial real estate, they had an active railroad line. They had houses for transitional housing for families. They had workmen's, carpentry, everything to make them a self-sufficient society in the Tulsa district in a short amount of time. So Mr. Gurley literally was a landmark innovator for cities in the middle of Oklahoma. So they established, grew, and developed this land to build it up in a relatively quickly time. Mr. Gurley's commercial business properties were worth about $55,000 back then. And today's dollars, that's about millions of dollars that his business is worth. Um, I wanna also say, before the riot and the massacre began to happen, you began to see the wealth and the influence of black businesses around this time began to flourish. Another thing that was tremendously a sense about Mr. Gurley's wealth was that his mindset was on self-sufficiency. One of the quotes that you see him mention a lot in his way of thinking and how the Greenwood District began to get so prosperous around this time was that he really wanted those in the area to depend on themselves first. What do I mean by that? It's okay to seek out help or get it, but try to build it and implement the policies for yourself and the growth will come. We will support each other naturally, but you must have a good product, a good understanding, and you must be self-sufficient in your learning. 
one of the things that was truly sad towards the end of Mr. Gurley's story is that we all formally know about the Tulsa Massacre. And if you don't, I will cover it more in detail in the story. But it was when a race ride broke out in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where they were literally bombed and um, persecuted by other white U.S. citizens. The one thing that was the most saddest about this situation was that you got to think about if you were Mr. Gurley, who had successful commercial real estate, who had a million dollars in his bank account, who had uh, was a wealthy business owner around this time. In a one day period of time, all of that was gone. And I tried to fathom and relocate it in my mind how it would feel to be at the peak or pinnacle height as a businessman and the next day it all be gone. Mentally, I can't even imagine how this gentleman felt to lick his wounds and relocate to the West Coast, which he would later pass away and move to. Um, it's truly remarkable the resilience that this gentleman must have had. And it's almost sad that for the peak businessman at his time, it was no sympathy for him and what he had did and what he had done. And his name was not resorted in history as a brilliant mind of entrepreneurship. Around this time when racial oppression was strong, O.D. Gurley is somebody that we all should look at with just fascination. How we look at the, the people of our generation right now. This guy dealt with this in true fashion with limited to no finance and no resources. He literally had to do whatever it took to get and earn the results that he got. The one phenomenal thing that I can't take away from it is that his mindset is still within a lot of people that you see. But I really think that this gentleman right here is overlooked and not discussed as much. And I just want to put the, um, the jumbotron or the light on this gentleman. Old O.W. Gurley around this time was truly ahead of his time. He was one of the Tulsa leaders and the Tulsa mindset of how business and ownership is supposed to be. Invent for yourself, believe in yourself, and become self-sufficient. Those were his philosophies. It's your boy, King Crowder. Checking back out again, y'all, with another gem hitting you hard of somebody that you should know or know about. I'll have some links at the bottom if you want to read some more about this gentleman and this incredible story. Again, Mr. Gurley, we want to thank you, and we want to apologize to you for what happened. And I hope one day that your soul is at peace and your family's in love. Peace.